Hey everybody, I'm finally getting my chord track workflow in place. I spent a lot of time this week trying to sort this out in my brain. How, as a keyboard player, can I integrate with this a little bit more smoothly than maybe it first appeared? So I want to walk you through what my new template is going to be when I'm writing songs. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to be starting with a chord region that pretty much goes either the entire length of the song or for each section of the song. Right now I just have the default uh, chord progression in there, one of the default chord progressions. So I'm going to be changing that. Um, I also have a chord helper track. And on this track, uh, we have the reason rack. I use the chord sequencer in there a little bit. And that just gives me some additional chords that I can work with. And then with that track as well, I'm setting uh, for the internal MIDI input, whichever track is my main keyboard track. So that's the one I'm gonna play in. Uh, and I'm gonna play it in without worrying about chords because I'm gonna be writing the chords as I do the song, but the input will come from that track. Uh, okay, in addition to that, I need to set the chords up here, the progression, to whichever um, speed of chord changes I'm making. In this case, I'm gonna have the chords, and so it's essentially one for every, it looks like two bars, that's what I originally played. And I'll know that based on what I end up playing with the actual composition. Now I did this song on, or the start to a song on one of the other videos where I was talking about this. So I'm gonna use that. I played the piano with the keyboard, I played the bass with the keyboard, I played the synth part with the keyboard, and I just used the coffee shop drums. Let me play a little bit of it for you. These chords right now do not match. So those are the chords I want to use, and but I want to maybe change out the bass or add something else with a different keyboard part. And so because I have the chord helper set up that way, uh, what I can do is click on the first chord here, open this up and say MIDI input. And when I push play, it's going to take it from that track that I played. And then I'm just gonna tab through when I get the right chord in that chord place. Now, there were a couple times that I played like a slightly different chord right at the end of the measure. And I'm not worried about those too much right now. You could always come through and, and just add them by adding another chord track and either playing it like I just did, or you could manually add those in. So let's just do for a moment, let's mute this piano. And now let's go to session player, keyboard player. We're gonna do um, block chords for a moment, like that. And of course, we'll be changing things around, um, simplifying it if I want to just do something more similar to what we had.
Okay, but because we have the chords now, we can also change out the bass player if we want to and do something super simple with that. Maybe even change this all the way around. Let's do the upright bass for this for a second. I'm gonna change the complexity of that intro as well. Wonder, movement, style, sustain only. Small range, minimal range. Let's change the chord. Okay, I'm liking it better now that I switched it off of the eighth notes. So what I do like about this was how easy it was to get my chords in, although it should be easier. I should be able to just drag my MIDI up and have it analyze it. I know it can do it. It's doing all the parts to it already. It's just not connecting the dots. But this way of playing it and tabbing through, and what you do is once you see the chord that you think it should be the right one, you tab to the next one and then wait for that next one to arrive and then let that one settle in on the right chord. Then I can come through and mess around with all this stuff and get different piano parts or, you know, I can always come back to my original one if I want. And back and forth. So this way finally feels a little bit more natural to me uh, and it's not too much of a roadblock. Once I get the chords in here that I want, I can relatively painlessly do that. Now, the reason I have the other chord tool out here, I'm not going to go through it right now, but this allows me to be able to, if I'm having a roadblock in my brain with chords, that I can use the, the Reason chord sequencer and actually bring some of those out there and use inspiration from it. So that's another nice thing about this technique is having that tool, having my chords and having the chord track beginning to talk to each other in a way that makes sense to my performance style. Hope this is helpful to somebody. Hope that you can see that now we have some options of maybe being a keyboard player, but also using the chord track without just stalling everything.